so what we've seen so far is that um, in standard uh, matching model, so is there really the standard matching model or a matching model with rigid wage, um, there is no uh, job rationing, which means that either when the recruiting cost is going to zero or when the search effort of unemployed workers is going to infinity, unemployment disappears. So basically, any time that the matching frictions disappear, unemployment disappears. Okay? And the matching friction, as, we, as we've discussed, they can be either represented by that cost that firms have to pay when they post vacancies, or they can be represented by the fact that the um, job search effort by job seekers is finite. When either of these two things, uh, you know, so either the cost goes to zero or the search effort goes to infinity, when either of these two things happen, matching frictions vanish. So in particular, it becomes free for firm to work with workers, unemployment disappears. So what that means is that in the standard model, in the rigid wage model, the only source of unemployment are really these matching friction. So what we say is that all unemployment is frictional. And in particular, uh, these, mo these models they do not capture the idea that jobs may be lacking in the labor market. So what we want to do now is develop a model, a matching model, in which jobs are lacking on the labor market, such that even when matching frictions are a non-issue, so either the cost of recruiting is zero or search effort goes to infinity on the worker side. So even when matching frictions are a non-issue, unemployment does not disappear. Basically, firms are not willing to hire all the workers on the labor market even when matching frictions are a non-issue. And so how do we introduce matching uh, job rationing into a matching model. So we need to make two specific assumptions, one on the production function, one on the wage function. So we're going to introduce job rationing into the matching model. And as I was saying, we need um, two specific assumptions. Assumption one. That's going to be an assumption on the uh, production function because as we saw, uh, both the rigid wage model and the standard model, they assume a linear production function that gives you a labor demand that's uh, horizontal in our labor market diagram. And as a result of that, uh, for instance, when uh, search effort is very high and the labor supply is pushed out, Unemployment is just going to vanish. Basically, firms are willing to absorb all workers who are willing to work. So we need to break that property. So we need to have a uh, downward sloping labor demand. And to do that, we know how to do it. We just need to have a non-linear production function. We need to have a concave production function. So the first assumption will be a concave um, production function. So output y is going to be to be a n number of producers to power of alpha, where alpha is strictly less than one, and of course more than zero. But the key thing is that alpha is strictly less than one. That's what's going to give um, the concavity. Second assumption, and that's just so that we can generate business cycles, so that we can have realistic fluctuations in unemployment and tightness, we need to have a rigid wage. Because if we stick to a bargain wage, so especially a wage that comes out of a surplus sharing 
then we know that um, the fluctuations in unemployment are just not going to be sufficient. So unemployment is barely going to move over the business cycle. So this is an assumption on the wage function. So the wedge is just going to be some scalar omega times productivity to the power of gamma. Gamma is the elasticity of the wedge with respect to productivity. The key thing here is that gamma will be strictly less than 1. It will be also positive, but um, the key thing is that it will be uh, less than 1. And that, as we've seen, that's what is going to generate uh, fluctuations in unemployment. So under these two assumptions, we know uh, we know how the model behaves, we know what the equilibrium is, so we know what the labor demand is, we know what the labor supply is, and we know what the equilibrium is. So we'll be able to study uh, what happens when matching frictions disappear. So either when the locking cost goes to zero or search effort goes to infinity.